I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Tizio Giuliano. I'm going to talk today about everything you need to know about working with chiplets. Well, Tizio, we've heard a lot about chiplets lately. That's the big buzzword. There is just not enough room to put all the features everybody wants on a reticle and have it still function. There's also more data that has to be done. There's more processing that has to be done, particularly with AI. What do people have to know when they're working with chiplets? Okay, the first things that we need to understand is how we partition the system, right? We have this big AI chip. Uh, we used to design 300 millimeter square chiplet chips. Now we cannot fit everything in one chip. So we start partitioning. The first things that comes naturally to, naturally to disaggregate are IOs and connectivity. Those type of building blocks don't scale with process node. So it's easier to keep those in auto process node and keep your compute power in advanced technology node. So the first things we do with our customers to help them disaggregate the system right. So we talk about IO disaggregation, we talk about memory disaggregation, and then the compute that can take advantage of the latest technology and the latest uh, uh, power benefit and performance benefit of using uh, a leading edge technology nodes. So this really becomes a partitioning and prioritization exercise, right? Yes. and. Um, also, what is uh, best implemented in uh, a 7 nanometer, like for example in IO, a service, or PCI Express Pi, is really optimal technology node for that particular, particular function. So it's more domain-specific disaggregation, how I would like to call it. So we have a PCI Express and Ethernet Pi that really can perform optimal in a 5 nanometer or 7, technology, 7 nanometer technology node. And then we have instead our AI accelerator, our XPU, that can really take benefit of 2 nanometer, 3 nanometer technology nodes. Well, let's take a closer look. Sure. Well, Tizzy, what are we looking at? So this is our test vehicle using Silicon Interposer from Tizen C Foundry that integrates two chiplets in a, multi in a multiple system package. So we're looking at two die. Um, that are active silicon connected to UCIE, Universal Chip for Interconnect Express, and the other dies are dummy dies that are integrated along with the silicon interpose. What sort of challenges do you run into as you put these together? So, one well, first challenge is to assure performance, reliability, and the minimum power when integrated chiplet together. So Universal Chip Interconnect Express help us to really have a good uh, way of connecting two chiplets together, assuring maximum bandwidth density and reliability over the link, and also assuring the two die that they implement in UCA can interface each other with the same type of form factor and compliance. Where do your customers run into problems when they're working with these? It's a new thing. Nobody has done this before. So we are doing this for the first time now. So the first problem is to understand how much bandwidth I can move from one die to the other one. How I pack all these wires so dense within the same package. So there's a lot that goes into um, a package design, silicon interposer design, as well as electrical testing of the link over the silicon interposer. Um, so we do help our customer with designing silicon interposer, doing silicon integrity and power integrity of the link in a given uh, system package. There's no standards here though too, right? I mean, we've been talking about standards. I think the only one that actually is, is a chip with a standard is HBM. Is there too much freedom? Is that causing problems when people are working with these? When you are a closed system, you can choose how to connect two chiplets together and you can decide which type of data interface or protocol you want to use. But I think today we have a good platform in the use Universal Chiplet Interconnect Express that helps give you the methodology how to connect the two chiplets together. Uh, UCIE, that in this picture you connect two die, two little die inside this package, give you a, a description of the Pi, the physical layer to be used, the protocol layer to be used, and also the bump out and form factor between the two chiplets. So it gives you some good tools and methodology how you can connect two chiplets together. You're dealing with two chiplets there though, right? And when you start getting into hundreds of chiplets, it becomes a whole different story. 
Yes, when we talk about system, and we have some example in the industry, they can aggregate things in 2.5D with silicon interposer, or they can go 3D, where we have hybrid bonding or silicon stacking on top, right? And then the number of chips can increase really a lot. So, yes. And there will be more complication than that, right? Because when you start talking about 3D stack, then there is not really a standard yet from 3D stack. So things are done ad hoc, given your top die and bottom die uh, anatomy and structures. And it gets even more complicated than that because you also potentially have chiplets from different foundries, right? They may be different sizes, they may be different heights. Correct. Uh, there is no standardization about that. Um, so it's all done based on your closed system. Um, uh, today we have, a, have a experience by integrating chip from TCMC and Samsung, for example, or memory vendors. Right? We have a memory vendors that can integrate their HBM stack along with a computer that is done in another foundry. So there are examples in the industry and we are doing it. It's all done a really complex, long process to get that completed and done. The other challenge here is they all have to be electrically in sync. They have to be characterized the same way, right? And if they're coming from different vendors, do you run into problems here of how do you actually figure out the what they really mean by the characterization? Are they t talking apples to apples? Um, there are the concept of the non-good die, that for a GPM memory, when they integrate in a package, is well known, right? So GPM gets tested standalone as a non-good die, and then all the other, other chiplets also can be tested standalone as a non-good die. But it's all a design practice that we have developed over the years, how we test a piece of silicon to be compliant with an electrical specification and also with a, a, a design manufacturing specification. Another big challenge here is that this has to be within the price range that, that companies can afford, right? So you think about most of the chiplets that have been used today, they've been used by big systems companies. But we're trying to move this into a completely different realm where it's now moved to much smaller companies. What sort of, what do you have to do in order to make that happen? Yeah, when we look at system in package, we analyze what is the total cost of ownership, right? So how much it will cost to design this, to package it, to test it. So there is a lot of things that come into picture. Um, this particular example is an advanced package. So it's really give you the benefit of high density, high bandwidth, uh, so lower power, low latency. But the silicon interposer today is very expensive. Um, other technology or other example can be integrating chiplet in standard package. This is an example of standard package. In this case, we have two die connected to UCIE, Universal Chip Interconnect Express, through organic substrate. And this is more the classic uh, traditional organic substrate package that definitely has a lower price point compared to silicon interpose. With advanced package, we can integrate up to two millimeter, five millimeter length and that definitely does reduce the power of the overall link, uh, given the shorter trace and the higher available link. So how long before we actually start seeing these show up in a lot of products that we deal with? Today, we already have multiple examples in the industry of system in package and complex system in package. Look at what AMD, NVIDIA and Intel have done. But what we're going to see in the next couple of years is other uh, users, other SOC designers taking advantage of this technology and thanks to the packaging enabling, thanks to um, a, a ecosystem bringing up this technology up to speed, we will see more and more users, specifically in the AI space where we cannot design anymore with one single die. We need to move to chiplet and chiplet now is a solution is available to that. Well, Tessia Giuliano, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you. Thank you.